Hi, this is Robbie with Believe in the Run. This is Taylor with Believe in the Run. And today we're gonna to be talking about trail shoes, some of the top trail shoes of 2023. You're our lead trail review reviewer, so we're gonna get into it. It's been a good year for 2023. Great year, yeah. We're seeing a lot of carbon plated trail racing shoes yep. from the Nike Ultrafly to the Pogo Tectonics 2, North Face Vector Pro. There's been a lot of good stuff this year. As lead trail reviewer, I want to get your thoughts, some of your picks. First pick, what are we going to go with? This one's going to be first pick for a lot of people. One, because it hasn't changed a whole lot since last year, but some of the major things have changed. This is the Hoka Tecton X2. Our trail reviewers, all of our trail reviewers really loved it. And so this this was our favorite trail shoe, I think, of last year yep. overall. Uh, it was uh, It's meant for racing, but it can kind of be used for anything. If you're gonna use it for road or gravel or anything, kind of feels like that super trainer you guys have been loving. Yeah, I mean, I love this just as a road shoe almost. I felt like last year before, Hoka was in that in-between stage where they weren't mm -hmm. making great stuff. This year's a different story, but I thought this was a great road shoe. And really the only difference between this year and last year is the upper is a new matrix upper. It's better shaped, the lacing is a little bit different, holds to your foot better, and extremely durable. Yeah, and this has a, a carbon plate in as well. It's actually like a two-tiered carbon fiber plate, sort of like an independent suspension. Yep. So it's great for racing, great for everyday training. Um, pretty lightweight as well. I think it's like right in the nine ounce range. Maybe yeah, a little more. it's definitely um, in that racing weight. And what people love most about this is with the two plates, the suspension, it just makes the whole ride uh, a little more moderated than other carbon plated shoes on the market. Right. And so it just, it's really accessible for a lot of people. Yeah, and I would say there's one other change to this shoe that you didn't mention, it's $225. I believe yeah. last year's version was $200. So it's up there in the price point, but you're getting a lot of a lot of good stuff out of it. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it'd be an easy one to go to, especially if you're wanting to make the bridge to yeah. having a true racing trail shoe. And it's got that Vibram outsole. Can't yeah. get wrong with the Mega Grip, for sure. All right, let's move on. My personal favorite trail racing shoe of this year um, is the North Face Vective Pro, okay. Summit Vective Pro. The North Face hasn't exactly been, I don't know, top tier as far as trail shoes no, go. not at all. This is kind of a change for them. It's a big change, and really their whole lineup has changed. They're trying to do kind of what Saucony did with a few different tiers of shoes. And this is just their racing kind of top of the line model. And it's similar to the Tecton X2 in that it, it is made for racing. It does have that carbon plate, but different in the sense that it's uh, forked at the front. You get these uh, Vective uh, wings. That's the Vective series, getting those wings in the plate. And it's really responsive. I wouldn't say it's as crazy as our wildcat, the Saucony Endorphin Edge. Edge. Yeah, that's a crazy one. <laughs> yeah, it, it fits right in between the Tecton X2 and the Endorphin Edge in terms of just being super responsive. Yeah. It has really nice roll. In in some ways, uh, like you're saying, it's more responsive than maybe the Nike Ultrafly, which yep. is a little bouncier, softer foam. A little more hard to growl on the trail. So you're saying this is a little bit more stable as well. Probably. Yeah, more stable, especially with those plates, the winged plates. It, that's the purpose of it to make nice. it more stable and trail ready and I believe the weight on this is around the 10 ounce range I think it's just like touch over so yep still pretty lightweight you're getting a lot out of this shoe. This probably handle what distance do you think this could handle yeah I think this could handle like I think it would be a great 50 mile shoe even up to the hundred they've seen a lot of success nice. I mean UTMB champions yeah, uh, in, out of the shoe. So cool. what do we got here? This is the Saucony Endorphin Rift, and I personally haven't run in this, but our trail crew gave it rave remarks. Loving what came from the Saucony Endorphin Edge. A lot of that technology is in here, but sans plate. So you have the Power Run PB midsole, yep. which is the same type of foam used in their racing shoes on the road side. Yep. We talk about the Endorphin Pro 3 and Endorphin Speed 3. Now with the Endorphin Edge, and I know we reviewed that shoe last year. I wore it as well. It's a pretty crazy shoe on the trails just because it is fairly unstable. Yeah. Now, is this a little more stable? Yeah. So without the plate, um, really what you get from the foam is a lot of just really soft cushion. Okay. And so that's what the other reviewers like so much about it. Just soft cushion, the daily trainer, long miles. 
ounces. Yeah, and it's crazy lightweight. It's like eight and a half ounces yeah, for a men's size totally. nine. Uh, I know our one of our top reviewers, Matt, he wore this for a pretty technical trail race. Like 70 yeah, miles, Yeah, 70 right? mile trail race. I think he wore it for like half the race and then switched out, which he was planning to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it really held up well for him. Yeah, it's a good race day option at that lightweight. You get the PV, power on PB foam. Yep, the power speed track roll technology, speed roll technology, power track outsole, and I think it comes in at that like 170 price point. Yeah, so a little more than your average trail shoe, but if you're talking about you know fifty dollars less than this, yep. you're getting a pretty good seventy five less than this. Yeah, seventy five less than that, then you're getting a pretty good deal on that. So, and this this might end up being trail shoe of the year. We'll see. Yeah, it has um, potential. And another thing that, um, especially here in the Rockies, and I, with the endorphin edge the outsole was more foam based okay and this one's going to be more rubber based so it's a lot more durable than nice. what people saw in the that is true edge. yeah so that's the top three that we have in hand here we have a couple others that we want to mention because you haven't tried it you've been injured yep. for a little bit here but our other trail reviewers have loved those shoes mm -hmm. so what are those one of them is the upcoming solomon thundercross brandon throw a photo up there and which then, by the way that shoe looks awesome it looks like uh something that would come out of like the 80s like Knight Rider or something like that yeah, you would wear. Totally. I don't know, it's a great design. Yeah, it's a good mashup of some of their uh, former model models like the Speed Cross series and their Thunder Cross series. It's like 140 bucks. Yeah, very reasonable. reasonable. So I think Solomon really knocked it out of the park with that one. I think we'll have to keep an eye on that one for sure. Another one we wanted to mention was the Topo Athletic Terra Venture 4. Topo is always just makes great trail shoes. It's like yeah. they know just, they know how to do it. It's very similar to like the Lone Peak series, and in my op opinion, having run in the Terra Venture 3 last year, it ticks all the boxes that you would want from a, a low to the ground uh, trail shoe that has low stack low drop yeah and it and it has that wider more anatomical fit and so that's yeah. just been a great daily trainer for anybody cool so that's the top five now there's one more that i have a feeling that's going to be on the list that i i think it's still on embargo at the time we're shooting this we can't show it i think it's coming in a few weeks and that's uh the racing shoe from adidas Terex. yep uh that's been tearing up lots of courses yeah yeah every um, course. oh western states there's a couple podium yeah. finishers yep. with that UTMB, we've seen it crush there. So yeah, I think over that a few years without even knowing, like I have a feeling that's going to end up being possibly one of the yeah. top shoes. So. We've had our hands on it at TRE and it's yeah. legit. Thanks for watching this roundup. Make sure you follow us here on YouTube for all the updated reviews that we got as far as trail and road. Um, again, this is just a list so far. It's August, 2023. There's gonna be some good, more good ones coming. Yeah. We, re we have a end of year list that we always put out that we'll make sure the, that's conclusive of our favorite trail shoes uh, overall. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And yeah, I think there's some good stuff coming. I'm excited. I can't wait for you to get back on the trails. Me too. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's dying over here. Yeah. <laughs> We're in Colorado together and we didn't even get to run together. It's super disappointing. It's terrible actually. But, but uh, it's all right, we'll do it again. Sometime. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, happy trails.